Hello people, in this video we want to look at lower segment cesarean section. Uh, in the last video we have already looked at uh, a cesarean section, what is the definition, we have looked at uh, the history of the naming, the incidence, why is it, why it is going up, we have looked at the indications of uh, cesarean section, right? Then um, we have looked at uh, the elective versus emergency, when do you, uh, what are the indications of uh, cesarean section, what are the absolute indications, what are the uh, relative indications, when will you do an elective cesarean, when will you do a emergency cesarean, right, uh, so all this we have looked at, we have looked at the types of cesarean like lower segment um, uh, cesarean section and the other one we have looked at um, is this uh, classical cesarean section where you are cutting on the upper segment which is not done nowadays, okay, nowadays what we have done is only lower segment cesarean section. Uh, only if lower segment is not approachable, they are talking about classical. Okay, We have looked at the differences between lower segment and classical uh, cesarean. So now where are we? We are looking at lower segment cesarean section completely in detail. Okay, So in this, uh, how are you extracting the baby? You are doing an incision through the lower segment of the uterus through a transperitoneal approach. Okay, This is the only thing that is practiced nowadays in modern obstetrics. Okay. And only whenever lower segment is not approachable, they are talking about a classical section. And why do you prefer lower segment? Because this one does not undergo contraction and relaxation. So the wound will be more strong and it will not give up in the next pregnancy. Okay. So in this you have lot of type of incisions in the lower segment itself. They have shown here the transverse and the vertical and the J incision etc. So what else are we going to look at in this video? So what are the types of incision and what are the advantages? This transverse abdominal incision, they are calling it as, uh, this one is it, steel incision. Isn't this more transverse? But anyways, we are referring to this one. This is also transverse abdominal incision. This is modified steel, it seems. So let us look at this one. Po uh, why, what are the benefits of this one? So basically, it is uh, post-operative comfort is more. The fundus of the uterus can be better palpated during immediate post-operative period. Less chance of wound dehiscence, this is why we are doing a lower segment also, right? Less chance of wound dehiscence, less chance of incisional hernia. So in future, these people will not have any incisional hernia from this cut. Cosmetic value is there because it is going inside, right? Inside it is going, so you people cannot see it. So that's what is the best thing, I think. Uh, otherwise, why? Less chance of wound dehiscence compared to what? Fundus of uterus can be better palpated, okay, post-operative post care is more, okay, what is the other things? Takes a little longer time, guys, are you focusing? Look at, uh, listen guys, we are talking about what? Financial incision, what are the disadvantages? Now, let's take a red, if you want red or a brown, what do you say, let's take this color. Takes a little longer time, such as unsuitable in emergency, so in emergency, they are, they don't choose this, blood loss is slightly more, they are saying, requires competency, during repeat section, so when you are doing a repeat section, you will require competency unsuitable for classical operation. Okay. Anyways, wound dehiscence is more cosmetic value, this much you can remember. But time taken to do it will be more and some blood loss will be there. Okay. Okay guys, so now let's move on. So how will you prepare for the surgery? All this you should understand. Understand that, but before that, uh, some more uh, 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 information is there about the incision here on the uterus. Okay, uh, see whatever you saw till now, the abdominal incisions, those are the fenin steel and etc. So basically, you here you are doing what a kind of a transverse abdominal incision, right? So once you do a transverse abdominal incision, again on the inside, uh, when once you go, you have to decide how to cut the uterus, right? So basically, uh, the uterine incision can be a transverse or a vertical. So uterine incision can further be a transfer or a vertical. Two incisions you are making, right? One on the abdomen and then on the uterus. So the uterine incision, why would you choose a transverse incision? Again, same thing. So you know you have to do it lower segment, that much you have understood. But on the lower segment itself, would you do a transverse or a vertical? So what the answer here is, uh, again, transverse. So basically, you are doing transverse incision on the uterus. Why? Because the wound healing is perfect, the scar is sound, the perfect muscle opposition is there, wound hematoma is less, gutter formation is less, the wound remains quiescent during healing because there will be no relaxation and contraction. The risk of scar rupture also is very less uh, in future, right, uh, compared to the vertical one on the uterus. 
Now, coming to the transverse one, same thing they have written here. Look at this. Um, uterine closure is easy. Muscle opposition is good. A reperitonization is complete. Intraoperative bleeding is left. Subsequent adhesions are also less. So, further operations they can do. So, this is what is about transverse. But what is, uh, look at this, bladder dissection is also minimal. So, bladder you will not go and nick it or something. That is also good. But what about, uh, what is the bad thing about transverse? So, when you extend the incision, you may involve the uterine vessels. So, somewhere here the wet vessels are there. Let's say once you extend this transversely, you may, the chances of um, involving the uterine vessel is there okay now what about the vertical one vertical one everything is more uterine closure is difficult muscle opposition is imperfect reperitonization is imperfect what exactly do they mean by this reperitonization are they putting it back in the peritoneum or something then uh, that is also imperfect then intraoperative bleeding is more subsequent adhesions are more so almost everything is a red here uh, and the thing with vertical is you may land up going into the upper segment and below you may hit the bladder. So, both the ways it's dangerous here, this vertical one. But um, uh, in this uh, transverse one, uh, we definitely don't have the uh, fear of hitting the upper segment and bladder also is safe. The only thing that they're concerned about is the uterine vessels. Okay. So, you have understood everything about the abdominal incision and the uterine incision. So, this phenyl steel and all, whatever you saw, this is actually the abdominal incision when it comes to the uterus, they are talking about the transverse, vertical and some J-shaped incision. Okay, These two are anyways involving upper segment. Don't look at that. So, uh, in the next video, we will continue about the pre-operative preparation for the lower segment cesarean section. Right? Then we will look at how to incise the abdomen, how to do a uterine incision. Right? Then, um, uh, what are the steps of LSCS? Then... How will you deliver the head of the baby, trunk of the baby? How will you remove the placenta? Right, all that we have to look at. Then we have to look at uh, suturing, how to suture and post-operative care. That's it. Okay, so let us continue in the next video with the pre-operative preparation for LSCS. Say bye. Bye.